Y'all, thank you for coming. Next week, I'll propose to the General Assembly how we should use the $2.4 billion we received from the American Rescue Plan. As you know, our Accelerate SC group has, has had a numerous meetings about that and has submitted their recommendations to me, and we'll make that recommendation to the General Assembly uh, soon. In addition, I'll propose how the state will distribute $525 million from the Savannah River site lawsuit settlement with the federal government. With these funds from the American Rescue Plan and the Savannah River site settlement, we in South Carolina have a once in a lifetime opportunity. We must seize this moment to set our state on a strong course for generations of prosperity and success. This is an opportunity with these funds at this time in our history that we cannot afford to squander. We must invest these funds wisely and transparently and make transformative investments. That is investments that will provide South Carolina with the workforce, the infrastructure, the intellectual capital, the environmental assets and the quality of life necessary to compete nationally and globally for jobs and investment. And I can think of no better place to start and demonstrate this transformation than right here on Interstate 26. So today I'm proposing, and we will discuss, that we use over $360 million from the American Rescue Plan to speed up the widening of I-26 between Columbia and Charleston. Everywhere you look, South Carolina is growing, businesses are moving here, businesses are expanding here, businesses are starting here, more and more people are visiting our state, We've seen a rapid increase in the number of goods and products flowing through the port of Charleston, and we've seen the corresponding increase in traffic and delays on our roads and highways. The Department of Transportation has long identified the widening of I-26 between Columbia and Charleston as one of its highest priorities. This one-time investment, this transformative investment, will allow the department to accelerate that widening by six years. And that again will give us a jump start in competition with our competitors around the country and in the world. I just want to say that South Carolina's business is business. Uh, everybody knows it around the country, around the world. We have a very supportive legislature. We have very supportive public officials. We have a very enthusiastic population. We have a right to work law we never close and the sun is always shining in South Carolina and that is why we are outstripping and out competing our neighbors. Christy Hall. Thank you Governor McMaster. It's a pleasure to be here with you uh, this morning and I uh, want to talk a little bit about the I-26 project. As you can see behind me it's a very busy interstate here in South Carolina. I-26 is actually the longest interstate in all of South Carolina when you look at it from end to end. And uh, the section here behind me carries about 22 million vehicles per year, 5 million of which are truck traffic. As you can see, a lot of truck traffic goes up and down this section of interstate as uh, it heads towards our to and from our coastal port. This section of I-26 was built nearly 60 years ago. So it's 60 years old, and in that time, we've had an increase of more than 30% in uh, traffic all across the state, including right here. Obviously, we're the 10th fastest growing state in the nation. So with that comes a lot more travel, a lot more traffic, and with that congestion when the infrastructure does not keep up with that growth. This section of I-26 in particular is well known all across the state, anybody that drives this area or is familiar with this area knows that this section of I-26 experiences congestion, delay, and frequent accidents really on a routine basis. Not every day, but most every day there is an issue here on I-26. Uh, and it can take hours to travel this area, uh, travel through this area versus uh, normal travel speeds. This connection from the Midlands hub of, the, of South Carolina to the port uh, and to the Charleston area via I-26 is absolutely critical and crucial to our continued prosperity here in South Carolina. 
a widened I-26 is needed now. As the governor mentioned, this is a high priority for the South Carolina Department of Transportation uh, because we recognize the need to address the current issues that we have here on this section, as well as to set the stage for our future, future growth and continued economic prosperity. Our original plan that, that we've been working on at the Department of Transportation for a couple years is to tackle the, I, the widening of I-26 really from both ends working inward. So working from the Columbia end towards Charleston and working on the Charleston end towards uh, Columbia. And we had intended to work on those two, uh, on it in segments, really two 15 or so mile pieces on, at each time on either end uh, over the next 10 years. So we, our original plan was to go to contract with the last segment in 2029 or 2030. So a 10-year, a decade-long project. With this bold plan proposed by the governor, what this does with this one-time one funding boost will, will accelerate this project forward by at least six years uh, to get us going really uh, where we'll be poised to go to construction with our first phase of it next year and then the uh, two sub subsequent phases on each end by 2023 and then construction will continue in uh, sequences after that. So instead of starting the project within the next 10 years, we are anticipating being able to complete the project within the next 10 years. So that's a remarkable vision by the governor to uh, accelerate this project forward. Governor, I wanna thank you for your vision and your leadership on this matter. This is vitally important for our state and I urge the General Assembly to concur in this bold proposal for the benefit of our citizens, businesses, and visitors to South Carolina. With that, it's gonna be my pleasure to introduce April Allen. She's the board chair of the South Carolina Manufacturers Association and also with Continental Tire. April. Good morning, thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, as Christy said, I am, um, my name is April Allen and I am the current board chair at the South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance and I do work for Continental Tire. Um, the manufacturing industry um, is a major driver for South Carolina's economy. Manufacturing in our state has estimated annual economic impact of more than $200 billion. To maintain and grow our businesses, meeting the demands of our customers, we must have the ability to move our raw materials, our finished products, both domestically and internationally. We also need to move our people back and forth from work to home every day. The state's rate system is critical to our businesses. That's why today's announcement of this investment to improve this portion of I-26 is so very important. Strong and reliable infrastructure that helps move products efficiently and gives our hardworking manufacturers the tools that we need to succeed is critical. We applaud the governor and the legislature and the DOT uh, for seeing the value in making this investment in infrastructure and recognizing the positive impact that this will make for our state. So um, with that, I'm gonna introduce Sean Goodwin, who is the chair of the South Carolina Truckers Association. Thank you, April. Governor, Secretary Hall, good morning, everyone. I'm Sean Godwin. I'm the uh, president and CEO of Palmetto Corp. Uh, we're a Conway-based highway contractor. Um, we have over 600 employees with five locations throughout South Carolina. I have the privilege to serve as the chairman of the board of the South Carolina Trucking Association. Uh, we're an alliance of, of businesses that use trucks basically on, uh, on a daily activity. Um, I can attest to you that uh, under Governor McMaster's leadership, uh, with DOT Secretary Hall's hands-on guidance, uh, South Carolina's transportation, distribution, logistics, all these industries are growing rapidly to serve our state's expansions. These supply chains um, have, like everyone else, have been strapped and they're straining to keep up with the various demands and they're increasing every day. As others have said, I-26 is truly the most important South Carolina-centric interstate corridor within our state. Uh, I-26 has enabled the uh, development of growth in international and domestic economy like no other route. Um, I-26 is the key artery for the flow of goods, services, um, as well as our particularly our well as our South Carolinians. Um, 
trucks move about 75% of the cargo in and out of the port uh, and about 94% of all the manufactured goods in South Carolina. This shows that every other link in the commercial supply chain involves trucks and professional drivers. If other modes have dis disruptions, as we have seen, I-26 and the trucking industry steps up and fills those voids as necessary. I-26 is a major tourism route. It's packed with vacationers, beachgoers, all for their weekends and holidays. Uh, we all share this critical corridor. But when I-26 bogs down, we all bog down with it. To remain competitive in I-26, like, every, every, like all of our infrastructure, um, it also has to be maintained. But just as important as maintaining it, we need to expand it and modernize it. Modernizing I-26 with intelligent systems incorporating real-time traffic management, monitoring, extended entry and exit ramps, better designed interchanges and signage, larger and safer rest areas. All these things increase the safety, efficiency, and the velocity of I-26. You know, this can be our state's competitive advantage. Um, while we increase the quality of life of our traveling public, as well as our professional drivers. Our elective officials have recently dedicated funding for the deepening of South Carolina's shipping highway, the Charleston Harbor. Now we urge them to do the same for I-26. We urge the South Carolina General Assembly to follow Governor McMaster's lead and use every dollar available to expand and improve the critical South Carolina lifeline, which is I-26. Thank you. Governor? Thank you. Well, that's the first time I've heard the port called a, what do you call it? A, sea, it a uh, water highway, sea highway. That's good. Shipping highway. Shipping highway, because that's exactly what it is. Um, this, does, this gives us a chance that we have the opportunity to make some great progress here at a, at a, very, at a critical time. Because after the, the, the virus, uh, which of course is still here, but from what we've gone through all around the country in the last year and a half, people and businesses are, are, are anxious and bursting at the seams and ready to, ready to expand, ready to grow, and ready to get back to business. And the fact that, that our team is ready to put in a, a very wise way, we, we know where the money will do the most good to make the most transformative major impact and to have this project on I-26, which is critical to our future success and prosperity, to be moved up by six years, gives us a six-year advantage that we would not ordinarily have. So I want to thank the highway commissioners. I see several are here today. And thank our, our great team for, for the work that we're doing and that we will do. Are there any questions for anyone? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Adcox. So there's a 20 mile segment in between these uh, these two these two portions. I expect that uh, pending approval of this funding that we we will likely be able to extend the widening a little bit greater than the 15 miles we're showing here, because there's a, a benefit to starting earlier. You you avoid all the cost escalations that are built into some of these estimates. So I expect that we'll be able to do a little bit more than what we're showing here today and do it faster than what we had originally planned. Um, so this one-time infusion basically creates a cascade of events, not only taking advantage of the timing and moving things up forward, but it also will enable us to the funding that we had planned in 2029-2030 to start the, this last segment, we'll be able to move that forward as well. So it's, 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 a, it's a, the cascade effect of this one-time infusion will enable us to begin work really on the entire corridor uh, over that same time period that we were looking at before. Now the 360 that the governor's um, proposing will go explicitly to I-26 and so we will look to deploy those, that funding on the sections that we've already identified in our priority list, in our plan, so what it does is enable us to really just accelerate all that forward, move, move that forward, accelerate it, and create a cascade effect where we can just keep sliding additional sections of I-26 
in, a head, in earlier than originally planned. Yes, we, our plan actually, uh, part of the beauty of the plan is that it, it's applying funding towards an existing priority that we've already identified and we've been working on the design work and the plans for this. So it's really a matter of the, once the money becomes available, we're ready to go. Um, and and uh, I don't anticipate any issues whatsoever on that. Like I said earlier, we're, we're currently poised to go to contract with seven miles of it next year. So we can put the money to work pretty quickly um, within a year. And then uh, the next contracts that'll come out are planned to go in 2023. 10 mile segments on either end and then we'll just keep walking it back and forth over time. I anticipate no issues whatsoever based on uh, the, the deadlines with the funding nor industry capacity. Uh, the way that we've got it sequenced and phased I believe will fit very well with what our industry can support. More questions. Obviously, with the amount of road work that's happening all across the state, uh, folks are used to seeing uh, construction and road workers and contractors out working along our highways. It'll look very similar. So there'll be a lot of construction activity, a lot of uh, barriers and, and cones and equipment working along the roadways. However, we take a, a lot of care to make sure that we're able to keep two lanes in this situation, two lanes of traffic moving at all times in both directions to, to Obviously, we can't stop the traffic on I-26. We've got to do our work and accommodate the movement of people up and down the highway. So, uh, you know, it'll be no different than any other project. I just, again, ask for people to slow down and be safe through the area, and we'll, we'll accommodate that movement of traffic to and from the Charleston area. Any more? Three hundred and sixty is what we need. That's what we've identified needed to close the gap from a uh, from an acceleration uh, time point for us. So that was the request, and uh, uh, that'll fit well within our plan. Because it's allowed, the way the act is structured, it is allowed and we don't want to wait. We have this, we want to go ahead and, and get this started to get that six year jump that we described earlier. Uh, the first seven miles that we have planned to go to contract will be from uh, Jedburg Road to SC 27. And again, that's poised and ready to go to construction next year.